If you're an Apple user, then you've probably heard about the Apple ecosystem. That's the collection of devices and services uh, that work together to give users a seamless user experience. Now for today, because uh, our friends at Samsung recently bought out a new set of devices, we thought that would explore uh, what's actually going on in the world of Samsung and its ecosystem. <laughs> Hey, what up? It's your boy Mob Justice back again with another video. And for today, we're going to be talking about the development uh, of Samsung's ecosystem of devices. But before we get into all of that, I'd like to take time to just thank everyone who's been riding with us, rocking with us, supporting us um, on this channel. It is our 50th episode, which is a huge milestone since we started about uh, three years ago um, for this particular series. It was a little bit slow in the beginning, uh, but over the last year or so, we've tried our best uh, to be as consistent as possible. As always, this uh, video is brought to you by the team over at Lion Media. Uh, head on over over to check out some of the crispiest uh, photo, video, and audio content. That's www.lionmedia.com. Head on over, uh, check it out, and just see uh, what the team can do for you. Samsung recently held a Galaxy Unpacked event back in April. I meant to do this particular video back then, uh, but you know life gets in the way sometimes. And in going through that presentation um, and looking at the thrust that Samsung had uh, because they brought out a series of new laptops um, that is the Galaxy Book, the Galaxy Book Pro, and then I think it's called the Galaxy Book Pro 360. And you have these devices and basically being premised on why can't our laptops be more like our smartphones? And that was one of the things that got me thinking just around how Samsung, you know, could be thinking in the background trying to create this cohesive cohesive experience um, between their different devices and therefore grow uh, their ecosystem. Now, there's no doubt that when it comes to ecosystems, the kings undoubtedly is Apple, you know, from their Macs to their iPhones over to their services, they really have created uh, what some have come to call a walled garden. Now, with that in mind, there are a couple of things that we can take from Apple uh, to sort of establish a base of what it takes to create an effective ecosystem, right? Four things. Firstly, uh, we need to have devices that are able to talk to each other. If anyone has ever used, let's say, a MacBook together with an iPhone, at least of uh, the last five years, these products really talk to each other very well. Things like AirPlay, AirDrop, and all of that. At the same time, there needs to be a similar um, user experience across the software. If you use a MacBook, a Mac computer, an Apple TV, or an iPhone, you have similar um, software experiences across these devices. At the same time, the physical products themselves carry a similar design language. And then lastly, you also need to have a set of services uh, that sit on top of um, that software experience and also make use of these devices. So on the side of Apple, you'd think of things like Apple TV Plus, Apple Music, the newly introduced uh, Apple Fitness Plus, and all of those things. iCloud is probably the first example of how Apple started um, putting a service on top of all of its devices. Now, Samsung is a large company, but particularly on the side of electronics, it's quite clear that they are trying to build an ecosystem for themselves. And given the success that Apple has had over the last couple of years, we've seen a number Number of different manufacturers that are all trying to build uh, different products and services that are all talking to each other. Think about the likes of Huawei together with Xiaomi, um, I think even Sony 
LG, all of these different uh, device manufacturers. On the side of LG, it's a pity that um, their smartphone division is going to be shut down uh, because that would have been a contender. But all of those pieces seem to be coming together um, on the side of Samsung. Now for Samsung, all of these things, you really see them coming together when you use a piece of software and an app like SmartThings. If I open my phone, for example, uh, you can go in, you can and you know, before we even get into things um, on the side of Android, you see all of the different apps uh, that they have for themselves. A lot of manufacturers do this, but if I go specifically under the Samsung tab, you get into smart things, which is their hub uh, for all the ecosystem apps. And you see um, how it works. If I press the plus button, you see under device, device types. They have all of these different types of devices uh, that they want you to be able to link uh, to this one app. I bring up smart things because I was one of the big pushes at this Galaxy Unpacked events, uh, trying to show uh, the benefits of having as many devices as possible being linked to smart things, echoing once again uh, that intent to become an ecosystem player. Against that backdrop, then we can look at the pieces that Samsung does have in place. Place. They've got smartphones, they've got tablets, uh, they've got laptops, they've also got television sets. And of late, they've been touting their television sets as uh, proxies for displays because if you connect a samsung device uh, at least one of the newer generation ones to a screen um you know through a usb c cable it turns um your tv screen into a desktop interface uh through a system called samsung dex uh, once again another little piece um in the puzzle at the same time, what makes Samsung different from the likes of Apple is that they have a whole range um, of appliances that they have from washing machines to fridges that could all potentially talk to each other and be connected to the internet. Coming back to the side of smartphones, um, and also on some of the other mobile devices, Samsung actually has its own app store. If you go here under the Galaxy Store, I've just opened up my phone once again, you see all of these different things uh, that they have you know, available here from featured themes uh, to apps to games, um, all of this stuff. A key piece of an ecosystem as we highlighted on the side of Apple is having that unified software experience. And though Samsung still has fragmented pieces, you can see that they're trying to bring things together. On the side of smartphones, uh, they have one UI which sits on top of Android and that design language has really been looking good uh, over the last couple of years, especially with the latest set of Galaxy uh, smartphone devices. But at the same time, uh, Samsung has been developing its own platform uh, called Tizen and we see this working, especially on the wearable devices such as uh, uh, their Galaxy Watch as well as their Samsung Smart TV. TVs. Now, whether Samsung would switch over uh, completely to Tizen remains to be seen, uh, but for now, it would seem uh, that at least on the side of smartphones and tablets, they would keep um, with Android. Now, coming to the actual presentation itself, we do have to speak a little bit about it because our production value was very high. Really cool to see uh, that manufacturers are taking these uh, product announcements really seriously. I still think Apple's uh, production quality um, is still top notch uh, when you just see and compare, uh, but um, what Samsung was doing was really good. Uh, but the difference is, you know, where the likes of Apple, you know, try to be as simple as possible. Uh, this presentation was quite technical on the side of Samsung. But another common theme that we see uh, more and more across manufacturers is um, they're once again touting um, the fact that they're going green, that they're helping the environment. Now, since this was primarily a laptop computer sort of launch, uh, the two key partnerships that Samsung highlighted uh, was with Intel and with Microsoft, once again, uh, speaking to the somewhat fragmented nature of Samsung's ecosystem 
system because where the likes of apple controls it has its own um desktop operating software and make now makes its own chips um samsung still has to rely on microsoft for windows but at the same time also relying on intel for its chips while that may be so one of the key things that came out of the uh, keynote was the fact that samsung has actually been working with microsoft um, to allow for compatibility of samsung apps running on these new notebooks that it has and i think that's really cool and once again uh, that ability to have a unified software experience we've started seeing this on the side um, of apple when they introduced the m1 max uh, together with the latest version of mac os that ability to have um, the iphone apps running um, on the side of the mac so it's really cool to see the same thing happening um, on the side of android together with microsoft on the chip side uh it was the usual thing we've got an i3 i5 and an i7 uh, but these are using intel's evo platform uh, and i think what would be very interesting to see i haven't seen them for myself but just seeing how these machines actually measure up um, against the m1 max that have been brought online um, so far what i thought was really cool is the fact that um, samsung in trying to make its laptops more like smartphones um, that they actually went and took the hinge um, that comes from the Galaxy Z Fold and put it in, you know, some of their notebooks, you know, some of that technology uh, coming from the foldable devices and seeing how they can incorporate that in a traditional laptop design. I guess for me, the only criticism on the side of uh, the builds and all of that stuff is, you know, why not include a uh, full size SD, especially as a creator myself, uh, because cameras usually come with full size SD uh, card slots as opposed to the you know to the mini uh, or micro sd uh, card slots that have been made available on this side otherwise uh, i am just happy to see that someone out there is still including uh, sd support on their machines apple i'm looking at you with the product stuff out of the way we can actually look forward at what are some of the key missing pieces uh, on the side of samsung for them to have a cohesive ecosystem and there are three things uh, that actually stick out for me uh, the first one is just the appeal if there's one thing that apple has been able to do very well is to be able to get a person to buy one apple product and then another and then another and then another because you can just see those incremental benefits you buy the iphone it works very well with the mac it works well with the apple tv it works well with the imac it works well with the apple music all of those things so the key thing that manufacturers outside of that are going to have to fight and battle is how do you convince a person to buy one samsung device and then buy another samsung device another samsung device another samsung device so that's a key thing that samsung is going to have to work on the second bit is around uh, the software, right? Um, on the side of uh, the smartphones, we already highlighted the reliance on Google for Android. On the side of uh, the desktops and laptop machines, we've highlighted Microsoft. But at least we can see that on both sides, they're making a lot of effort to just put their own design fingerprint and their own uh, way of doing things with smart things and at the same time making sure that their you know smartphone apps are working on the laptops at this point the switch over to tizen completely away from android is unlikely simply because of what we've seen um, on the side of huawei though that decision was forced and uh, we've seen that without google services they haven't fared as well especially in international markets yes in their part of the world but uh, for a company like samsung that really wants to dominate uh, a across the world it's unlikely that they will stray away uh, from using those google services and while samsung does have its own app store one of the key questions is whether samsung is going to dive into some of the services that we've seen uh, the likes of apple getting into an online streaming service for music and video um, things like cloud things like you know all of those types of services 
how far is samsung willing to go on that front or rather would they look at themselves as creating the best hardware so that people can have the best experience uh, for other types of services where that's spotify netflix and the like that might be one way for them to go now in conclusion it's quite clear that samsung is focused on this issue of uh, creating a cohesive ecosystem and increase the appeal of their devices get people get consumers to buy more and more of their devices they can increase uh, their revenues whilst at the same time keeping uh keeping the money circulating in their samsung ecosystem maybe develop more and more services and you know have more of that uh making it an attractive offer for consumers another key question for samsung in developing its ecosystem is how far they're willing to go when it comes to developing their own chips this is something that we've seen um apple really going hard and strong on Samsung has already shown its capability because on the smartphone side, they do have their own line of Exynos chips uh, that sometimes sort of go in parallel with the, the Snapdragon side of things, right? So they've already shown that they can do things on that end. The real question would then be um, on the side of laptops and other devices, is the demand or is the movement of products high enough on the side of those other devices for them to justify the investment in developing their own chips or is it just better for them to keep um, the partnership going with the likes of intel that remains to be seen and will be you know excited to keep an eye on developments in that space so that's been it for this video you can let me know what you think do you really think that samsung is going to succeed now uh, with their ecosystem do you think they're even building an ecosystem or or are they just expanding their product range and they have no plans for cohesiveness at all are we all just speculating for nothing you can let me know in the comments and i'll catch you guys in the next video this is muffs too much and you're watching mob justice tv like us on facebook follow us on instagram follow us on twitter we're there on youtube thank you for watching our video subscribe